Welcome to this overview of Force.com for developers. Before we get to the demo, let's briefly talk about why you'd want to build apps on Force.com in the first place. This comment I found on Twitter pretty much sums it up. Developers are using Force.com for the same reason you'd use libraries, frameworks, or design patterns. Constantly rebuilding common functions like object persistence or reporting from the ground up is at best a waste of your time, and at worst, another source of bugs and potential point of failure. Now here's what's nice about developing on Force.com. For applications that need things like a relational database, user management and access control, workflow, web and mobile user interfaces, localization, reporting, and search, you can stop reinventing the wheel and focus on what's really unique and interesting about your application. Since they run in the cloud, your apps can go live as fast as you can develop them, instead of having to wait for ops to requisition or provision new servers. And with 60,000 customers hitting this platform with hundreds of millions of transactions a day, you know these components work, so you don't have to worry about regression testing the whole stack every time you add a new piece of functionality. With Force.com, you can build 80% of your app declaratively by just configuring these platform components. For example, here I'm adding a new object to this volunteering app to manage community organizations that we're partnering with. All we need to do is specify the object name and description, and what optional features we want, such as enabling reporting, attaching activities like tasks, and maintaining an audit log of changes. We'll also create a new tab in our web app to make it easy for users to create new partner records. Adding fields to custom objects is just as easy. You can see the platform supports all the standard data types you'd expect, such as currency, date, number, pick lists, and text, plus some special ones like auto-incremented sequence numbers, roll-up summary fields, and field values derived from Excel-like formulas. Let's add a phone number field to our volunteer partner object. We'll make it a required field, so we'll always have a way to get in touch with our community partners. Notice this field level security step. With Force.com, you can define security profiles to give groups of users create, read, update, or delete permissions on each object in field, and even control access down to individual records of the object. At a higher level, the platform also provides things like SAML-based single sign-on, IP range restrictions, session security, and auditing. Now let's also add a pick list field to keep track of the type of partner this is, local, national, or global. Now that we have our entity, let's add a relationship. With the force.com database, you don't have to deal with primary and foreign keys. Instead, the database automatically generates a unique ID for every object and uses relationship fields to store the ID of related records when you create a relationship. Now let's actually create some records. If we want to add some volunteer partners, all we need to do is click on this volunteer partners tab and click new. Notice that we didn't have to do anything to create this UI. It's actually generated and rendered in real time based on the object metadata. So any changes to the data model will automatically be reflected in the interface. To see how relationships are displayed, we could create a new record, but it will be faster just to link to a couple of records that have already been created. Notice the inline editing of fields and the lookup dialog, two other UI features that come for free with the platform. And here are our two related volunteer opportunities, linked to our volunteer partner record. There's also a WYSIWYG page layout editor for customizing your UI. For example, I can just drag and drop to move this type field to a new location. Or to add this volunteer partner history list, which is essentially an audit log, to our form. If we create another new volunteer partner, we can see that the type field is now in the right column. And any changes to this object are logged in the history list. If you want to customize the UI further, you can also build custom Visual Force pages using popular web technologies such as Ajax or Adobe Flash. For example, here's the public facing part of our application where visitors can pledge time and look up activities in their area. 
you can see that this custom site is running within force.com. We can hide the header to see what the live site will look like. Visual Force follows the common MVC pattern and includes standard controllers to make it easy to access objects, such as these local volunteer opportunities, which are being pulled in real time from the force.com database. Since we're building this app on force.com, we can take advantage of all of the platform services. For example, new objects and fields you create are automatically indexed and searchable, with search results governed by your security rules. And if you enabled reporting when you created the fields, they will be immediately available to reports and dashboards. You can also build out custom workflows driven by changes in data and human approval processes, such as this approval process for mileage expenses that exceed a certain threshold. All of your objects and fields are also instantly accessible to authorized clients via the Web Services API. You can use this SOAP API to query, create, delete, and modify your data, or to access metadata, for example, to determine what fields are available in an object. So we've seen there's a lot you can do with just declarative configuration of platform components, but what about when you need to drop down a level and write some actual code? The Apex programming language allows you to create arbitrarily complex or transactional business logic that runs natively on the force.com platform. In the Eclipse-based force.com IDE, we can see all of our metadata components and files, such as classes, objects, and triggers. In this example, we're managing expense reporting for our volunteer coordinators. Here's a trigger that executes some custom Apex logic to determine whether a new mileage expense is allowable. Apex has a syntax that will be familiar to Java and C-sharp programmers. For example, here are some variable declarations with a strongly typed syntax. Here you can see a standard for loop iterating over a set of records, using an intuitive syntax to select data, including a dot notation for accessing fields within an object. Apex code can contain DML operations to retrieve, insert, delete, or update data in the database. This schema explorer is a convenient way to browse your data model and to test the results of a query before you add it to your code. Apex also provides dynamic mechanisms to introspect objects and construct queries at runtime allowing you to build more flexible, loosely coupled applications. When you want to save your changes to the server, you can just right-click and select force.com, save to server. You can also abandon your changes by refreshing from the server or perform a synchronization to manually resolve any conflicts. With force.com, everything runs in the cloud, so you don't have to worry about overwhelmed build servers or the discrepancies between your workstation and the production environment. Here's the sandbox we saved our changes to. You can create different sandboxes and specify how changes will flow between your sandboxes and the production org. For example, here we set it up so the two developer sandboxes can freely exchange changes with the QA sandbox and each other, but only the QA sandbox can promote changes to the staging sandbox. You create a change set by selecting the objects and other components you want to deploy, such as Apex classes, triggers, custom objects or fields, or other components. You can then check for any dependencies you may have missed. And then add those objects or components to the change set. Finally, you click on Upload to send it to the destination. Here's our QA sandbox, which is receiving the change set. An admin or engineer on the receiving end just needs to click on Inbound Change Sets and then review the changes and accept or reject the change set. Now that we've accepted and deployed the changes, you'll see that our custom Apex trigger and logic are working on this QA sandbox as well. So that's a quick overview of force.com. 
If you haven't signed up for the free edition yet, just head over to force.com and click on the free force.com button. Once you've registered, head over to developer.force.com and check out the getting starting materials, such as the tutorials workbook or the more detailed force.com fundamentals, developer guides, or cookbook manuals. Thanks for watching.